Hello everyone, you are welcome to this lesson. In this video, we are going to solve this question I have here on the screen. The question says, knowing that angle alpha is equal to 40 degrees, determine the resultant of the three forces shown. Okay guys, so let's look at how we are going to solve this question. Okay, so we were given this figure here, and then I've drawn the free body diagram that we are supposed to use to work out this solution here. Okay. So you have this angle to be 20 degrees. Okay, and then I'm representing the block as a point mass. Okay, so as you can see, this is the block here which I've represented as a point mass. Okay, and then we're giving angle alpha to be what 40 degrees. Okay, so let's write that value here. And then here, okay, let's write the 40 degrees there. So we have 40 degrees here. Okay. And then we have 40 degrees here too. Okay, so let's look at what you are going to do now. So before you can find the resultant of the three forces, you must find or you must resolve the forces into their components. Okay, so you must find the vertical components of all the forces and also find all the horizontal horizontal components. Okay, and then when we are done, we add all the vertical separately and then all the horizontal component separately and then that gives us the component of the resultant force okay then you can take the magnitude of that to get the magnitude of the resultant force so that's what you are going to do so let's look at how you are going to resolve these forces into their component you can see that the block is an is on an inclined surface okay which is inclined at an angle of what 20 degrees okay so in doing our calculation, we must consider this angle of inclination. So let's look at how you are going to solve this question. Okay, so what I'll do is that I will draw a horizontal line, okay, which will be parallel to this horizontal surface here, okay, and then I will name that line as my new x, as it's let's name it as x prime, okay. Then I'll draw a vertical line, okay? I'll draw a vertical line, which will be perpendicular to the new horizontal line. Then we will name that as our new Y axis. Okay, so let's name that as Y prime, okay? So this is the new axis that we have, okay? But with a question, we're giving this Y axis and then this X axis, okay? But we have defined our new axis, okay? This is going to help us to resolve the forces into their components considering the 20 degrees angle so let's look at how you are going to solve this okay so you see that this y axis here okay this y axis here and then this x axis here okay are perpendicular to each other right which means that this angle here will be what 90 degrees right okay this angle was 90 degrees let's take note of that okay and then that angle is 90 degrees and then once you will see that this angle here okay and then this angle here will be will be z angles okay so that means that you are going to have 20 degrees here okay let's take note of that and then if the sum of all this angle should be equal to 90 degrees then you will have to find the value for this angle here and see what you are going to get okay so you're going to have 40 plus 20 okay sorry plus that angle which you don't know let's call it angle x okay and then that should be equal to what 90 degrees right so the x will be equal to 90 degrees minus 40 plus 20 which is what 60 right so we're going to get the angle x to be equal to what 30 degrees so this angle here is what 30 degrees okay let's take note of that and then this angle here okay will be opposite to this 20 degrees that we have here okay so this angle will also be 20 degrees okay so that's all that we need to solve this question so i'm going to redraw the force system okay on the new plane that we have defined okay and then that will help us solve this question easily so let's go ahead and look at that okay so let's draw our new plane okay all right so Let's take this to be our x prime, and then this is now our what, y prime. Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so now I'm going to redraw the forces again. Okay, so we have 
this to be the 60 pounds and then we have this to be the 80 pounds and then we have the 120 pounds pause here okay let me draw this wall okay so this is what we have okay all right so we have this angle to be 20 degrees okay and then we have this angle here to be what 40 degrees okay and then we have this angle here now to be what 30 degrees okay so now you can use this system here to find the components of what all the forces okay let's start with the 60 pounds force okay so for the 60 pounds force okay if you take cosine of the 20 degrees okay that will go to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse right so the adjacent side will be the x component okay so let's name this as fx1 okay let's name this as what fx1 okay so that will be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse which is what the 60 pounds so we're going to have fx1 to be equal to 60 okay, multiplying cosine of what 20 degrees okay so let's simplify this and see what you are going to get 60 cosine of 20 degrees okay so this will give us a value of 56.38 pounds okay so that will be the value for the x component of what the 60 pounds force okay so let's find the value of the y component or the vertical component for that one so you're going to have sign of the 20 degrees angle to be called to fy1 divided by the hypotenuse which is what 60 right so you're going to have fy1 to be equal to 60 sine of 20 degrees okay so let's see what you're going to get 60 sine of 20 degrees will give us a value of 20 Point five two pounds. Okay, that's what we have. Okay, so let me write these values here. Okay, I think I think now I can just clean this what you have here. So I have that space. Okay. Okay, so now let me write that here. You have fx one. Okay, to be equal to fifty six point thirty eight pounds. Okay. And then you have FY1 to be equal to 20.52 pounds. Okay, so let's move on. So let's look at the 80 pounds force. You see that the 80 pounds force will be making an angle of what? 20 plus 40 degrees with the what? X prime as is, right? So to find the X component, you're going to have FX2 okay, to be equal to the magnitude which is 80 okay 80 pounds multiplying cosine of what the angle 60 degrees right and then let's simplify that and see what we're going to get so 80 multiplying cosine of 60 degrees will give us a value of what 40 pounds okay so i'm going to have 40 pounds for this value let's find fy2 that'll give us a value of 80 okay sine of what 60 degrees let's see what you're going to get 80 sine of 60 degrees that would be to 69.28 pounds okay that's what you have so let's record that also down so we have fx2 to be equal to 40 pounds okay and then we have fy2 to be equal to 69.28 pounds okay so let's look at the 120 pounds force so for the 120 pounds force it makes an angle of what 30 degrees with the negative x prime as it's right so let's use that to find the component okay so let's look at that so for the x component okay that is going to be 120 pounds multiplying cosine of what 30 degrees okay let's see what you are going to get for that 120 cosine of 30 degrees that gives us a value of 103.92 pounds okay let's look at the y component but for the y component you see that it will be 
pointing downwards okay so that means that you have to negate the wire component because it will be in a negative wires direction so i'm going to have f y theory okay to be equal to minus 120 sine of 30 degrees okay so let's see what you're going to get for that value so minus 120 sine of 30 degrees that gives us a value of what minus 60 pounds okay so now we found the components of all the forces so we have fx3 to be equal to 103.92 pounds and then fy3 okay to be equal to minus 60 pounds okay so let's look at what you are going to do next So you are going to sum up all the components okay, to get the components of what the resultant force. Okay, so let's look at that. Okay, so for the resultant force, okay, let's find the x component. Okay, let's find the x component. So we are going to have the x component, which will be Rx, okay, to be equal to, let me just take this off. So you are finding the resultant force. You are going to have the x component to be equal to fifty six point thirty eight plus forty plus hundred and three point nine two pounds. Okay, so let's see what you are going to get for the x component of the resultant force. You have fifty six point thirty eight plus forty plus hundred and three plus hundred and three plus Point nine two. Okay, that will give us a value of two hundred point three pounds. Okay, that's for the x component. Okay, so let's look at the y component. So for the y component, also we have twenty point five two pounds plus sixty nine point two eight pounds plus minus sorry minus sixty pounds okay let's see what you're going to get for that value so 20.52 plus 69.28 minus 60 okay that'll give us a value of 29.8 pounds okay so that'll be the value of what the wire component so we can use this to find the magnitude of the resultant force okay so let's look at that so you're going to have the magnitude of the resultant force to be equal to the square root of 200.3 squared okay, plus 29.8 squared. Okay, so let's simplify this and see what you are going to have. So the square root of 200.3 squared plus 29.8 squared okay, will give us a value of 202.5 pounds so that'll be the magnitude of what the resultant force so now you have to find the angle the resultant force will be making with the what x axis okay and then to do that let's consider the angle to be theta okay so we are going to have tan of theta to be equal to the opposite side by the adjacent side okay and then the opposite side will be the y component so ry and then the adjacent side will be the s component so that was rx okay so this will be equal to 29.8 okay divided by 200.3 okay so theta will be equal to the tan inverse of that value let's simplify it and see what you're going to get you have 29.8 divided by 200.3 okay so that gives us a value of 0 0.15 okay so Let's find the tan inverse of that value. That gives us a value of what? 8. What? 46 degrees. So that would be the angle that the resultant force will make with what? the new x as it. That's all for this lesson. Okay, so what I want you to do is to try this same question, but this time around, consider angle alpha to be equal to 75 degrees. Okay, then let me know your answers in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Please kindly like the video and if this is your first time watching my videos, please subscribe to the channel so that you can get updates anytime I post videos. Thank you.